simply for truth and against error. And if the Catholics teach something that is right, I'll say, yay, you're right. If my mother teaches something that is right or wrong, I'll say, yay, that's right, that's wrong. You don't ever want to get committed to a denomination or committed to, a, to any one thing other than truth. So I'm for truth and against error. And the Bible says in Ephesians, you've got to be careful about being carried away with every wind of doctrine. When religions differ on things, if somebody must be wrong. Of course, maybe they're both wrong. But at least one of them has to be wrong, okay, if there's a difference. So, he that cometh first in his own cause seemeth just, it says in Proverbs. And a young person, the first time they hear somebody talk about a religion, they say, oh, well, that sounds good. Well, you better search it out. I remember the first time I heard the teachings of uh, the Jehovah's Witness. As he, I was a brand new Christian. I got reading some of their stuff. I said, wow, that seems right. Until I studied it. Wow, that's not right. So, and that's the danger. Of any young person can be trapped because the first time you hear something, oh, wow, that sounds good. You better really search it out. We had uh, here on staff, one of the guys had a book that he was giving out, you know, to everybody, and it sounded really good, but it was written by some of the heretics of the first century. I said, well, you better really study this out. It seems right at first until you say, oh, wait a minute, is that true? Uh, it's interesting, if you read Genesis 27, Jacob and Esau, you know, how Jacob tricked his father. The father went by the feeling instead of by the word. He said, you sound like Jacob, but you feel like Esau. So he gave him Esau's blessing, and it's... The reason he got tricked is precisely because he went by the feeling. The Mormons will tell you they know they're right because when they prayed about Mormonism, they got a burning in the bosom. They got a feeling, of, oh, wow, this feels right. Well, just kneeling down and praying to anything will give you that burning feeling. Oh, and just a reverence of kneeling down praying to this rock. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's right, okay? And that's their whole thinking. It's all based on feeling. A lot of the charismatics do the same stuff. You know, they have this feeling like, oh, wow, I just feel like I should, you know, do this. We got the demonstration in the science center about the, you blindfold the person on the chair that spins. Any of you ever done that thing? Sit down there, get blindfolded, spin you around. Within 30 seconds, you feel like you're not spinning, even though you still are. And then when you stop the person, they feel like they're turning the other way, even though they're not turning at all. And that's how pilots crash their planes, because they go by their feelings and not by what does the gauge say. So, I am not anti any other religion. I'm simply for truth and for the Bible and against error. So keep that in mind. And you've got to be careful about going on feelings. Okay. People say, well, didn't the Pope accept evolution? Yes, they have several times. The Popes have accepted evolution, and many people have gotten upset. There have been at least three or four, I think, articles about the Popes have accepted evolution as a fact. This, okay. By the way, you want to do some interesting study. Read the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, and then go to any Catholic church and say, hey, do you guys have the Ten Commandments? Oh, yeah, they'll give you a copy of them. They left out the second one about don't make a graven image. Their Ten Commandments skip commandment number two, and they take commandment number ten and split it into two commandments to make nine and ten. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Which really was one commandment. Why wouldn't they want the real one in there that says, don't make a graven image? Because their church is full of graven images, okay? So, back in the uh, 1400s, if you committed certain sins, you could pay money to the priest and be absolved, get your sins forgiven. If you robbed a church, you'd have to pay $2.25. Here's the list of what they had to pay to get out of their sin. If you burn a house, you've got to pay $2.75. If you kill a layman, buck seventy-five. If you forge, forgery or lying, two bucks. If you eat meat in Lent, two seventy-five. If you ravish a, ravish a virgin, two bucks. If you strike a priest, two seventy-five, same as burning a house. Robbery, three bucks. Keeping a priest that keeps a mistress can do so if he pays two twenty-five. Okay. Procuring an abortion is $1.50. Murder of parents or wife, two fifty. You can be absolved of all crimes by paying twelve bucks. <laughs> That's how, what's the way to describe that? Stupid? Is that the best way to describe that? Okay. I'm not anti-Catholic. Okay. I'm for truth. I'm against error. That is error to say paying money pays for your sins, and it's error to say burning a candle pays for your sins, and it's error to say priest, father, I have sinned. You know. And you, would you please absolve me of my sins? That's error. The Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin, nothing else. So I'm not anti-Catholic. I'm simply uh, for truth and against error. Keep that thought in mind. Here's a picture of the Pope kissing the Koran. The Catholic Catechism in our library out here, you can read it for yourself. Some of the things they believe are pretty interesting. They say in the Catholic Catechism, uh, 841, 
The church's relationship with the Muslims is the plan of salvation also includes those who acknowledge the Creator, the first place among whom are the Muslims. These profess to hold the faith of Abraham, and together with us they adore the one merciful God. There's an excellent little bitty comic book called The Prophet you can get from our ministry. It's like $2 or something like that uh, by Jack Chick. He goes through the history of the Muslim church and how they started. Very few people realize it was the Catholics that started Islam. They started the whole religion purposely to try to get the Holy Land back for the Catholics. They built up the Islam. <clears throat> they, they funded Muhammad. They trained him. They sent a Catholic nun out of the monastery. They said, we want you to come out of your co convent, go find a young promising uh, Muslim, marry him, and train him to raise up an army of Arabs to go take back the Holy Land for the Mother Church. Quite an interesting story, if you want to read about that. It, it started to work, but then it failed because the Islam got so big, they said, well, forget you Catholics, we're doing what we want. And I don't think most Muslims, which is now, what, 10, 20 percent of the world population, Islam, I don't think most of them know that they really started off as a front for the Catholic Church. So let's cover just a little bit on Muslims. Ask the Muslims, you know, how do you know, <clears throat> how do you know Muhammad was a prophet? They'll say, well, he had a mole on his back. Holy moly. That's, that's how you know he's a prophet, because he's got a mole on his back. I've got a mole on my back. Got one right here on my cheek. Man, I must be a double prophet. Got two moles. Albert, you got any moles? Yeah. You, well, wow, bow down and worship Albert, you know. In uh, one of the Muslim verses, says, uh, <clears throat> Muhammad asked the question, when I am dead and buried in the ground and go back to dust, is that all? What will happen to me? Muhammad himself had no clue if he was going to heaven. This uh, verse in, in the Quran says, When he reached the setting of the sun, he found it set in a pond of murky water. Would that be scientifically accurate to say the sun sets in a pond of murky water? No. I would say this, the earth turns around and the sun you know, appears to go around the earth. This is not scientifically accurate. The Koran has loads of scientific errors. It's not a holy book. Allah commands any person who leaves Islam <clears throat> or encourages others to do so should be seized and slain. There are over 100 commands in the Koran to kill people who won't convert. Anybody that won't convert has to be killed. And I see Bush and these guys saying, you know, we're trying to bring democracy in Iraq. The problem with Iraq is their religion. They are being taught every couple days in the synagogue, you've got to kill anybody who won't convert. <clears throat> and there probably are millions of Muslims who don't like this and they don't want to do that, but they just, in order to be a good Muslim, you have to kill anybody else who will, won't become Muslim. That's the rules, okay? Islam is a religion where God requires you to send your son to die for him. The Bible is where God sent his son to die for you. <laughs> exactly the opposite, okay? If you study the history of Jerusalem and the problems with Islam, it's phenomenal. Keep in mind, they both come from the two sons of Abraham. Abraham, if he wouldn't have gone down into Egypt and got that Egyptian girl and had that one baby Ishmael, we wouldn't have this whole problem because all the Arabs come from Ishmael. And the price of gas would not be over two bucks a gallon if it hadn't been for Abraham and Hagar. Okay, I'll be more if the Jews had control of all of it. They like money too. But the Romans and Byzantines, you know, trampled uh, the city of Jerusalem. Uh, Chuck Missler's got all kinds of stuff on the uh, Jerusalem and the, the problems they've had with Islam over the years. It's been trampled down by the Gentiles. The Bible says, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all people. And we've got a ton of stuff in our college class CSE 200 series about Islam. The Quran commands, Allah said, any person who leaves Islam or encourages others to do so should be seized and slain. Allah told Muhammad that all those who opposed his message should be killed or they should be nailed to a tree with their, and their, or their hands and legs should be cut off. Uh, the Quran teaches when you meet or fight those who disbelieve, strike at their necks till when you have killed and wounded many of them. You're supposed to kill the heretics if they don't believe in, in the Quran and Allah. The third sir, verse 105 and 106 says, In the great and final day of redemption, only white faces will be saved, all blackened faces will be condemned. This is what they teach, okay? They say, men, marry as many women as you like. One, two, three, or four. Under Islam, you can have up to four wives at a time. Uh, and if you want to have temporary marriages, you can get married for 15 minutes. That's 
pornography is what it is. Okay, it's perverted. Look, I'm not anti-Muslim for the people. I'm anti what they teach. I'm for truth. I'm against error. Even if it's my own mother. If she's 99% right and 1% wrong, I'll praise her for the 99 and say, Mom, you're wrong on the 1. So I'm not anti, I'm not anti anybody. I'm anti error. And what they teach is error. It's not true. Remember, it was the Muslims that bombed Pan Am Flight 103. It was the Muslims that bombed the World Trade Center in 1993. It was the Muslims that bombed the Marine barracks in Lebanon. They bombed uh, military barracks in Saudi Arabia. They bombed the American Embassy in Africa. They bombed the USS Cole. They bombed the Twin Towers, 9-11. This is a danger. There, there, you cannot be a good Muslim without wanting to kill everybody else who's not a Muslim. That's what the Koran commands. So get out of that religion and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior.